Joker has finally defeated his longtime buddy and comic nemesis, Batman. This duo is as iconic as it can get, and in most cases, the ending has always been left with us wondering who would finally be the one to end this. In this issue, the roles have been reversed. The Joker becomes Gotham's White Knight, and Batman their nightmare. How so? Joker becomes the mayor of Gotham, and turns all of Gotham, even Commissioner Gordon, against him. Ready to begin, Bats? Let's start with one of our old standbys, the open drawbridge routine, Joker said as he tries skating away from the Batmobile. Joker, in usual fashion, commits another crime that has the Dark Knight, along with Batgirl and Nightwing, on his trail and in hot pursuit. They bulldoze through Gotham, without a single regard for the civilians' properties or even their lives. There are people in these buildings, Bruce. How do you know they won't crumble, Batgirl said. His reckless maneuvers worked, despite unpopular opinion. He eventually cornered the clown and chased him into a warehouse. Congrats on another great performance, partner, Joker taunting and teasing Batman as usual. But can you stand some constructive criticism? A little reckless at the construction site, almost flattening that one worker, not to mention all those damaged rooftops. Well, in one of the few rare moments, he wasn't wrong. Batman didn't like his heroism being critiqued and, as usual, lost it. Out of nowhere, crack, a right hand straight up to Joker from his so-called partner. He was finally in Batman's grasp, but why would that stop the Joker's teasing and trolling? We're a team, Bat. Admit it, that's our dynamic. All that's missing is the makeup sex. I don't expect you to acknowledge it. You're, after all, the distancer. I am the overly complicated one. As he did what he does best, which is talk, Batman continued beating his head until he was nothing but a lump of flesh covered in blood. Just when everyone thought it was all over, Bruce did not have enough yet. Bats force feeds him an entire bottle of some unknown medication he picked up. He just tried to kill him, and someone got it all on video. Tonight, we're discussing the Batgate scandal. Stunning footage of Batman's assault on the Joker has gone viral, leaving many to question the GCPD and the Dark Knight's methods. This was the beginning for our Bat's fall. For what might have been for the first time, the people felt something for the Joker. Sympathy. The Joker was now in a coma fighting for his life. Surprisingly enough, with the Joker's rap sheet, people are actually trying to save his life. What the hell's gotten into you, Batman? You're completely out of control, Dick stated. Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon had come to get some answers from Bruce. We're just worried about you, Bruce. After some pleading, Bruce finally decided to let them in on a secret as he took them down a dark passageway in his home. Oh my god, Alfred. He was dying, only being kept alive by freeze tech. Bruce was torn up and the Joker was not making it any easier. Eventually, the Joker had fully recovered, but something was off about him. He wasn't the Joker anymore. His physical condition was fine, but mentally he wasn't who he used to be. No more psychotic laughter, twisted smiles, or makeup. The finishing touches were his CAT scan and IQ tests were all beyond genius level. Whatever drugs Bruce force fed him and the traumatic brain injuries all had some sort of effect on his Joker side. He became clinically sane. In fact, he was so sane that he started working on a legal case to file charges against GCPD, Gotham City, and of course, Batman. But Commissioner Gordon wasn't having any of it. He's gotta be faking it, he says. Gordon sets up a meeting with the Joker, offering him a deal not to add any more years to his sentence if he cooperates. He rejects the offer and then gets rid of his cuffs with ease before calmly explaining why he wants to go to trial, listing a number of reasons why he has every reason to indict the GCPD for being in cahoots with the Bat. Standing up like some kind of freedom fighter, he ends his entire discourse explaining why Gotham deserves more than Joker, and more importantly, more than Batman. I love Gotham, and it's time I paid her back for the debt owed by the Joker. The city deserved better than you, better than the Joker, and better than the Dark Knight. So I'm going to be her white knight. The Joker, now donning his real name, Jack Napier, faces the court. I started out as a criminal, but I wasn't a murderer. When I was arrested, the police never gave evidence that I'd committed a violent crime. They just fudged the paperwork so that they could call me a supervillain. Truth is, I was just a kid from the country who wanted to be a Gothamite, and when things didn't work out, I screwed up and robbed a bank. I served 10 years for my crime, but they didn't want to release me. Because to them, I wasn't just a criminal, I was an excuse. My reputation and unstable mental condition made me a perfect candidate for their scheme. Jack Napier did exactly what he told Gordon he would do. Being televised around Gotham, Napier took the stand with one clear message. He was cured. But besides that, he was on a mission to appeal to the pain and anger of every citizen in Gotham. I'm not the only victim here, we all are. 
The gatekeepers convinced us that Gotham was a special city with special problems, that due process didn't work in Gotham. And for years, we've accepted the uneasy pact while they made this into a city of fear, where corruption has spread all the way to the top, a place where vigilantism has been normalized. And that was all good enough for the court. Jack came out of the court a free man, and the GCPD didn't have enough evidence to get him arrested. Of course, Batman would not let this rest. Now with his queen, Harley Quinn, by his side, it was time to begin planning, with one incredibly unbelievable mission in mind, become councilman. He started by funding the construction of a library in the low-level parts of Gotham, Backport. He used to hate you all, and you all hated me. Whenever we spoke, it turned into a game of who almost got him. That's how Batman has always beaten us, divide and conquer, so we'd spend more time fighting each other than fighting him. Jack in some secret underground meeting with almost every big bad in Gotham City. He continued, We need to pool our criminal resources and consolidate our talents. Batman and the GCPD won't have a chance against us as a unified fighting force. And let me guess, Gringo, you're going to be our leader? I'll never agree to that. Once villains, always villains, I guess. They would not fall for Jack's little speech, quite unlike the rest of Gotham, but again, genius-level intellect, so yeah, he saw that coming a mile away. How do you get people who never cooperate to play ball? Here you go, Puddin', Harley said, handing Mr. Napier Hatter's hat. You're all too proud to play nice together, so I'd have to force you. Using Hatter's tech, he was somehow able to control the rest of Gotham's villain gallery. Gotham's criminal underworld was in the palm of his hands. Now is when the real plotting begins. First, he needed a distraction, and with Gotham's entire rogue gallery answering to him, that was pretty easy to accomplish. Every villain in Gotham? I thought all these guys hated each other, Nightwing said. Looks like they finally figured it out, that we don't stand a chance if they start working together. Batgirl was pretty right. They didn't. So Bruce came up with a plan. If we separate them, less populated area away from the crowd. Round up the leaders and follow me. Still consumed by his hate for the Joker, Batman was sure that the Clown Prince of Crime was behind it all. The Joker's behind this attack, and the library is part of his plan. I doubt he'd let Croc and Bane destroy it. Not the cleverest of plans by a long shot, and it didn't turn out well, because the villains just ended up destroying the whole of Bagport, including Jack's new library. The people were going to turn their backs on Batsy now. While all that was going on, Jack, alongside Harley, was heading for something more important. You know why lawyers and accountants make paperwork so dull and confusing? To hide secrets. And this is Gotham's biggest secret. Back in the Batcave, Bruce had returned from his little failed mission. Hurt and bleeding out, he blacked out at Alfred's bedside. To save him, Alfred had to make a decision that jeopardized his life. He had to use the life support he was on to stabilize Bruce. You know what that means, right? Yeah, by the time Bruce had gotten up, Alfred was dead. Batman was already devastated before and hungry for revenge. He kept going by a single thought, destroy the Joker. But what do you think this would do to him? And that's when whatever the heck Jack stole was finally revealed. Yeah, it was some document, but it wasn't just any document. It was Batman's Devastation Fund. And here's your proof. Records I uncovered from the wreckage of yesterday's attack. What does it cost to pay Batman to destroy our city? Three billion dollars each year on floods and hurricanes that never happened. Three billion a year on Gotham's only disaster. Batman. That, right there, pretty much sealed it. A man who has been their hero for so long, seen as nothing but the reason for all their troubles. In pain, rejected, hated. This is a situation that Batman will have to play carefully. Gotham is now under Jack's direction and where he will lead Gotham. Will the Joker resurface? Because we all know the Joker wants to play with Batman forever until he kills him. Jack has disrupted all of that. So what will be next for Gotham's white and dark night? Find out at their and Gotham's fate in the second part.